Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine reporting to you from the Willamette Valley of Oregon. I'm here with Betsy Miller. Uh, she's a great instructor at Oregon State University, but she's also a researcher. They're doing a lot of work on filbert worm, our number one insect pest of hazelnuts. Uh, aside from, from mating disruption, which is a constant continuing of research, what other things are, are, are you doing as far as just helping growers to better manage these pests? Yeah, so one of the projects that we've been working on for the last two or three years, I would say, and that would be, we're still in the beginning stages of this project, is looking at the organic compounds, the volatile sort of um, olfactory cues from plants that the insects are picking up on. Um, and we're particularly interested in what are the cues for oviposition. So we're looking for plant chemicals that are being um, off-gassed basically from the plant that are stimulating oviposition in filbert worm. So recently um, what we've done is construct this little handheld field vacuum pump basically. So we can take it out to the field, seal up a, a nut cluster in this bag, turn on this pump, and we can catch those volatiles um, in a little filter. And we can wash those out in the lab, run them through with some fancy equipment, and um, figure out exactly what are the chemicals coming off of the nut. And then we can hook this machine up to the antennae of the filbert worm and figure out which of those chemicals will stimulate the antenna of the filbert worm. And so that's just kind of like a beginning stage of figuring out what exactly is stimulating opposition. What's causing these, these uh, filbert worms to come into the orchard and, you know, lay their eggs right next to these nuts, which we all know is going to, they're going to hatch and eat away, right, when the nut is, is tender and... And, uh, and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that data, what, what, what is the potential here? Yeah, so there's a couple ways that I can foresee using um, these ovipositional cues to help growers. And one of those is um, in conjunction with mating disruption. So it's kind of well known that in mating disruption, when you're trying to monitor um, your insect population, that the effectiveness of your pheromone traps can kind of break down just because of the load of pheromone that is um, in the orchard headspace. So um, adding the female attractant to that pheromone um, sort of mixture can really improve the effectiveness of your monitoring trap in the hazelnut orchard. So, you know, it's another um, tool to be used in conjunction with mating disruption. And then the other way that I can um, see ovipositional um, compounds, like the chemical compounds that stimulate oviposition. The other way I can see those being used is almost like mating disruption is used to um, confuse males using these chemicals to confuse the females. Because really, um, it's the females that matter the most. They're the ones who are laying the generation that's destroying the crop. So if you can really focus your control efforts on that part of the insect population, I think there's a lot of potential there. Great. And then there's, you also mentioned uh, when we were talking before that, that you're able to now rear filbert worm in the laboratory setting. It's really difficult to mimic nature, right? Right. Yeah. So that's another way that we can use um, these chemicals. Uh, so right now for rearing filbert worm, I have to make sure that I have fresh plant material um, year round. And so I'm actually now like freezing hazelnuts to try to make sure I can get this colony going all through the winter. Um, but if you can identify a particular chemical that really stimulates their opposition, then I might be able to just drop some on like a filter paper and off to the races. So, you know, that's my selfish uh, use for the oppositional cue. <laughs> so, but yeah, there's just basically, there's just a lot, it opens up a lot of doors for research if you can identify what is making the female insect tick. Awesome. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to pay close attention to what you're doing in the next uh, years. We do appreciate uh, the work of Oregon State University, and thank you for your time. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, PacificNutProducer.com.